Hello there, welcome back to Becca Ballistics. Today we're taking care of this old Winchester Model 1906 pump action rifle. It's an interesting 2-2 caliber design, very common in the early 1900s for gallery shooting. However, this one is not in very good shape. The bolt is completely stuck, so before starting to film I had to make sure it was unloaded using a cleaning rod, making sure it was reaching all the way to the bolt face. I also couldn't get the tubular magazine open, corrosion must have put it under stress through the expansion of rust. The only thing that wasn't stuck was the takedown screw, which allows the rifle to be conveniently separated into two sections. Now look at the stock. The rule of thumb is that the stock should reach to my elbow when the finger is on the trigger. This stock is miles too short and must have been cut, maybe to be used by children. I'll try to repair it as best as I can, but let's focus on the metal first. Ideally, I wanted to remove the wooden forearm before de-rusting, but to do that I would have had to remove the magazine tube, which was completely stuck. Sorting this gun up was already looking challenging and I could have never afforded making this video if it wasn't for Raid Shadow Legends. They offered to sponsor this video, allowing my channel to survive. Raid is a free mobile and PC role-playing combat game. Explore an intriguing storyboard, millions of champion combinations and master countless tactics as you take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles and PvP arena matches. With hundreds of artifacts to equip and over 600 champions blessed with unique skills, you can build your team, develop your champions and raid your way. Each champion has specific skills, so you better pick them carefully. Some of them, like Ithos, are great at attacking, others have healing and strategic skills like Ursula the Mourner and so forth. The amount of strategy required by the game is what I like most about it. Just as in real life, you won't go far without a good plan. Another great quality is that the game is continuously updated with new features and events. This month, Raid is running a special Diliana Chase event, where new and existing players can get their hands on the amazing Diliana, a brand new legendary champion from the High Elves faction, just by logging in. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and July the 20th, and you'll get Diliana for free. So there's never been a better time to get started. If you're not playing Raid yet, use my QR code or links below to download the game and you get free champions Misericord, Tiger Soul and Romero, 10 Magic XP, 10 Force XP and 10 Spirit XP brews. Also, all new players can enter promo code MYDILIANA to get 50 XP brews on top of that, to instantly get your legendary hero Diliana to max level 50, as well as a ton of silver. Promo code is available until July the 20th. Now back to our rust bucket. After 3 hours, most of the rust has turned into iron citrate, which is responsible for the green colour of the solution. The rest can be easily scrubbed off with a wire brush. At this point, I uncovered a serial number, written with unusually large characters, starting with KA, and I think this means that this gun was exported to South Africa. Maybe somebody can confirm this in the comments. Now that I've unlocked the bolt, I can concentrate on the tubular magazine. I have to be honest with you, it was a nightmare. You're supposed to rotate this knob and pull the inner tube out, but there's no chance I'm gonna be able to do it without hammering, so I decided to pull out the whole outer tube directly, which unfortunately was stuck as well.
Once I got a good grip on the tube and after another soak in citric acid, I finally managed to get the knob to turn, allowing me to hammer out the inner magazine tube. After brushing, it was clear the surface had extensive corrosion damage, but mostly superficial. On both the barrel and frame, I've got enough material for a light sanding, so I'm gonna remove about 800 of a millimeter of surface material, that's about 3,000 of an inch. It won't compromise anything, but it'll make the gun look much better. However, I'm always extra careful not to do rough sanding over markings, since I want to preserve their original depth. This means the surface won't be perfectly flat, but that's an acceptable compromise. And this is the result after 80 grit sanding. At this point, the residual corrosion damage is about as deep as the scratches left by some paper, so it's time to move to progressively finer grits. This one is 320 and I went all the way to 600. I don't want to go any finer because that would make the surface very shiny and any unevenness would be highlighted. Now I need to re-blue all of these. I like to use rust bluing on larger parts. Basically, I'm swapping the surface with a solution that will promote a controlled rusting, which I'm then going to convert into bluing by boiling in water. This particular solution is called ferrobronze. I've showed how to prepare it in my Luger restoration video, and I'll leave a link to it in the top right corner of the screen. While waiting for the past to rust, I'm preparing a caustic salt bluing bath, which I'm gonna be using for smaller beads, where it's much more convenient. Here you see me adding water, sodium hydroxide, potassium nitrate and a bit of slaked lime which prevents bath poisoning due to atmospheric carbon dioxide. I'm leaving a link to another video for the exact formula. Only after everything is dissolved I crank up the heat, wait for the solution to boil and dip the parts in it for about half an hour. After that, the now pitch black parts are simply washed in tap water, dried and oiled. In the meantime, our larger parts got covered in a layer of rust and it's time to dip them into boiling water. After 15 minutes, the parts turn black and they can be taken out. Unfortunately, most of the black you see is an uncoherent surface layer, which is easily scrubbed off. However, under that we find a strongly adherent thin layer of black oxide, which is our bluing starting to form. I'll have to repeat the process a few times to get it to the required darkness. What you're seeing here is the result after three passes. For the fourth and fifth passes, I used the zinc cell ammoniac solution I described in my Carcano restoration video, again, link in the top right corner. 
There was no need to change. I had just emptied my bottle of ferro bronze. It's still kind of interesting that different rust blowing solutions give the rust a different look, with this one almost looking purple. But maybe I'm just the kind of guy that finds watching the paint dry interesting. Anyway, fifth and last boil. So at this point I have all the metal parts ready for reassembly. However, the hardest part of the job is still yet to come. I have to fix the stock. This one is so short that it's almost impossible for an adult to fire the gun. I want to bring it back to its original length. To do that, I'm going to take the bit that is missing from this old BSA stock. The gun got scrapped and the stock was literally going to be used as firewood, so I'm instead kind of giving it a second life. However, I'll also have to cut a thin slice of the original stock since I need a straight and flat mating surface to do a good job. Now, keep in mind that I'm way out of my comfort zone here. I very rarely work with wood and haven't got the appropriate equipment, so I had to adapt as best as I could. I'm going to cut wood with a metal bandsaw, so if you're a woodworker or a stock maker, you may want to look away now. As you guessed, I'm gonna glue the two sections with the help of two dowels, but I don't wanna only rely on glue and dowels alone, so I drilled an extra hole for a screw that will engage a threaded insert inside the old stock. Now I've got everything ready to join, but before gluing it, I want to sand down the extension to shape. You'll soon see why. A bit of a funny shape, but you know what? Not bad for a green horn.
Anyway, why didn't I glue it before sanding? The reason is that I want to match the color of the extension to that of the original stock and I couldn't do it before sanding since the wood stain would have been removed. So I took it apart once again and applied the stain to get to the same color which I kind of succeeded in. However, if you've ever done woodwork, you know I'm doing a rookie mistake here. The fact that two pieces of wood have the same color when dry doesn't mean they get to the same color when oiled. I didn't think of that at the time of filming, so I went on to gluing everything together and you can clearly see that there's quite a big difference in color between the original stock and the bit that I added. You live and you learn, I guess. Anyway, I gave it four coats of true oil and here's the result. And here are a few before and after pictures. Now, I don't consider a job done if the gun is not in firing order, so I'm going to test it at the range. I take the occasion to show you how this thing works, as its mechanics are quite uncommon. It's a pump-action rimfire rifle that can be fed either too too long rifle, too too long or too too short, and its feeding mechanism was designed not to jam any of them. What you do is you drop the ammo into a slot in the magazine tube, and then push the inner tube back in its place. This compresses a spring that feeds the ammo to the feeding ramp, which is actually the core of the mechanism. The barrel was not in the greatest of conditions, it showed a bit of pitting, but it shouldn't have lost most of its accuracy. Here we were not really going for accuracy though, and Maurice was just having some fun. This is what he got. Once again, a huge thanks goes to my patrons, which as usual are all listed here. Thank you all for watching, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you next time. Bye.